uh, thanks for everybody to be online. So we already have 22 participants. We had almost 60 uh, registration from five different continents. And it's good because some of them are from uh, South America. We have people from uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, hello to my friends from Romania and, uh, and, and from Budapest. Uh, people from Scandinavia and also from uh, South of uh, Europe. And uh, thinking about my good friends from Spain. Um, so why this webinar? Um, as you know, we don't do webinars just for the sake of uh, doing them. But uh, what we observe for the last weeks is, is not just a um, sanitary crisis, but it's also a, a huge economical crisis for some of our, our members. Uh, I think we, we have a huge portfolio of our companies that are in very difficult position. Um, because they are struggling economically. Uh, most of the contracts are postponed uh, with the banks, with the insurance sector, with the fund uh, industry. Uh, and they're also struggling on the funding part because most investors, as you can imagine, are just waiting to see what will happen. So we thought, why not giving this webinar on negotiation? Uh, and the main goal is to give them the right tools uh, to negotiate and find a win-win situation with those uh, big institutions, because I'm pretty sure um, they will still continue to innovate, but they will try to get the best deal out of every every deal. Um, so yes, that's why we thought about you, Frank. So thank you so much for being uh, with us today. We, you already have done a great um, workshop with us a few few months ago on negotiation. Great feedback. So that's why we want to to have the round two with you. I will not introduce you. People can check your bio online on LinkedIn. Uh, what I want just to say that uh, you've been my boss at Procter & Gamble. You kicked my ass many times uh, for good reasons. <laughs> and you are the most hardcore negotiator I, I know. So uh, thank you so much for being with us and uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, hi, uh, everyone. Alex and Anthony asked me to do this webinar on negotiation in times of crisis. Before I relaunch the presentation, I was thinking about what sharing with you. The first thing I would like to share with you is my personal impression of the situation. There is not a crisis situation in negotiation, never, ever. If you have to negotiate, you have to do abstraction of the context you are in. You have to forget about your personal feelings and you are only in a situation where you want to achieve something. And therefore my class today or the webinar or our meeting will be probably much boring than the workshop. But I would like you all to be become boring persons because negotiation is about preparation. If you want, I will share with you a small 15 minutes presentation and afterwards I will have with Alex we will prepare the negotiation on the specific case on the sheet that has been shared with you this sheet should help you in any situation you are facing now to sit down for one hour with here in Luxembourg we would say with a piquant beer maybe with a bottle of wine maybe with a Guinness think about your situation and bring it to the point because it is as in sales as in marketing as in strategy you need to have a plan and when you are in a situation of huge pressure the most important is to have a clear plan and to stuck to your plan this is all about negotiation So I will skip the bio, but I put in the slide I shared with you during the workshop. They are all that. These are all that companies. Uh, COVID-19, financial crisis, and the last century we had wars there are, and continents that are going worse on. You are always living in a hostile environment. And how to perish is really easy. 
because as Darwin says, it's not the strongest, not the smartest, but the most adaptive species. And in order to be the most adaptive species, especially in negotiation, you have to challenge yourself. You have to challenge your idea. You have to challenge for a lot of them the project of your life, but you have to challenge it. And then you can go. And what to say about negotiation? We will not speak about who won. We will speak about the communication about people. Communication, we have both common and opposing interests. Negotiation is only about interest of two parties and have a conversation about them. Therefore, you have four main steps when you negotiate. First of all, you have to separate the people from the problem. And the first people from the problem you have to separate is yourself. If you are feeling under pressure, if you are feeling fear about your situation, about what is tomorrow, if you don't know how to go on, you have to get rid of yourself, really rid, and then focus only on interests and not positions. Invent options and insist on using objective criteria. Then when the other party has more power, especially in the crisis situation as the COVID, you have to go for a best alternative to a negotiated agreement. The BATNA is nothing else as the most advantageous alternative that a negotiating party can take if negotiation fails and an agreement cannot be made. We will prepare BATNA afterwards in order that you understand how you will how we will define it uh, you will ask you the questions before what could i do if my negotiation fall through how much this alternative is worth to me and select the alternative that will provide you the highest value. In the preparation, you will go to the scenario that you will fail. And you will go in the scenario that you are afraid of. If it will not work out, what will I do? But you have to play this upfront before to negotiate. And the negotiation before you go to see someone, before you start, discussion. It is all about preparation. I put a picture and this is a special picture for my friend Alex who wants to run the Marathon des Sables. I wanted to share with him the picture how someone looks that has finished 42 kilometers without preparing. All is about the preparation, about thinking about it because it's like prepare a trip Going into a negotiation is going on the trip. You have to get a good map or a good guide. And this guide is, a, as I'm a former Procter & Gamble guy, it's a single sheet. The single sheet Anthony shared with you. Based on the sheet, you fill it out for yourself. You prepare, you will see where to go, how to go there, Will I go to the negotiation or not? The case we would like to share today with you, and maybe Alex can resume the case. Alex. Yes, so uh, the case today, it's an uh, imaginary company. Yeah? So anything that could resemble to something that you know is just an accident. So we have a, a fintech company that does a Rectech AI ML blockchain as all fintechs, uh, all in one package. And uh, they go through a difficult process because, um, yes, I mean, they've got some people to pay on the payroll. They do some outsourcing of the software in Poland. 
and uh, they don't have much cash in the bank less like most startups today um, so they have two like two major institutions who wants to work with them so they thought about doing two POCs one with 50k and the one with 30k uh, with an insurance company but of course now with the crisis coming the banks is coming back to them and says uh, listen guys we don't have 50k we can just do a POC for 15k and the same thing for the insurance company saying that 30k today we cannot afford anymore uh, but we are ready to do something for free with you so this is just as i said it's a creative uh, use case but that could be uh, uh, yeah don't hesitate to drop your question thank you thank you anthony um so yeah so frank this is the yeah. the use case so this is the use case we have uh, two in them because we will have two negotiations. We have two contracts to negotiate. We have to choose if we go for the 50K that make the previously negotiated that wanted to 15K or we go for the insurance company. I would prefer to go for the insurance company because if someone wants something for free, in French you said, La gratuité n'existe pas. So I, I propose you, and I will change the screen. That we will prepare the sheet together. So first, when you are sitting down to prepare the negotiation, you have really to fill in the situation. The situation, if you fill it in, has to be on the points. The point in this is, I have a cash burn of 13K per month. which is an important one. And I have 30,000 euros cash, so I can survive two months. I have to see an insurance company that wants a 30,000 euro job for free. They promise me if we do it for free, they might give me a contract in three months. When I have this situation, and I would like to go to a win-win, Alex, which type of relationship I have with this company? The type of relationship you have to define it on the actual one. Are you in a win-win situation with them? Are you in a lose-win situation, a lose-lose? Which kind of actual relationship you have with them? Even the situation of some of our companies, just having a, any kind of relationship with the financial institution is already a win, even if maybe it's for free. But of course, it's going to be a losing-win situation because you don't get any money uh, out of the deal. It's Are a question sure? of, of perception, I guess. Yes. So it's a lose-win situation. Yes. If I, I do the job for free, of course. Okay. Are you sure that it's not the lose-lose situation? That's my perception. Okay. <laughs> You give the the webinar. What's your perception? No, oh, I ask you. It's your. It will be your negotiation. Uh, Which relationship you want to have with them? Of course, the goal is to have a win-win situation. Yes. No, it's the goal. The goal can be as well to have a lose-lose situation. When you think about negotiation, you can have each type of relationship and you should always ask you the question is this a partner you want to go for a win-win 
is this partner that wants something for free from you when you are in deep shit? You want to go for a win-win with this partner, yes or no? Or do you want to go for a lose-lose? You but have you, to ask you this question. But you'd never start a negotiation if you know it's a lose-lose situation. Yes, then, then we are finished. Okay. Because if you think that this partner is not a valuable partner for the next year for your company, then you will have a negotiation with them on lose-lose and you will use other techniques. Okay. Therefore, you really have to think about it. Do you want this relationship win-win for the future? Is this the partner you want to work with? Not the 15K is important in this negotiation, but the relationship you want to have with them for the future. So. I want a win-win situation. Okay. Otherwise, we stop here. <laughs> Then we would have another case, yes? And we would not have to stop here because then we could negotiate with them to do it not for free but for 10,000 euros and have a harder negotiation with them. Okay. You understand my point? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. By the way, if yeah. somebody wants to help me, please go on the chat and drop your, <laughs> your suggestions. <laughs> the only thing is, this is what I mentioned before, you really have to think about it. Yeah. If I want to have a win-win with someone or lose-lose, in the lose, they will have something they wanted to for free and have to pay 5,000 euros for it. I will have 5,000 euros and I will have two weeks more. But I could go for it. Okay. My goal of relationship would be, yes? Yeah. So Alberto just mentioned on the chat that for him it's more a lose lose situation because you don't get the market. You don't get the market from the company, but the company doesn't have our services because you don't move forward. Exactly. But let's imagine that we want a win win situation. How we will approach the negotiation? Okay. So what are your interests as CEO of this company? and think about the Maslow pyramid. What is the most important for you? If you speak with this partner, what are your interest in doing? So I, I have a huge interest uh, as I'm quite human by nature. So for me, it's uh, make sure that uh, I can pay my people. And I think most of entrepreneurs are in this situation to get some money to pay the, the salaries. Uh, in the short term, uh, mm -hmm. at least, um, and then yes, try to have a foot on the whole, on the door uh, and try to start this relationship with the financial institution. So you only want to have with this insurance the start of a relationship. What does this relationship could bring to your company? future contracts. Uh, also, I can use it as a branding because it's a very, very well-known financial institution, let's say. Um, okay. And they can also, because that's the case of most POC, they give us the perfect use case that you can replicate for future contract with all the financial institution afterwards. Yeah, people yeah, see in, in Asia mainly assuming that yes, it's just a start and then uh, gives you a chance to have future contract. Um, yeah. What do I have? Technical reference. Yeah, technical reference, uh, valid in my product services. Uh, yeah. Okay. Another interest you have in working with them. That's it. Okay. So now you have to do something very difficult. What about their interests in working with you? 
access to technology. So of course, for them, it's going to be uh, access to a technology or services they cannot uh, develop themselves, um, or uh, let's say uh, at a less expensive cost than uh, finding another outsourcing company, uh, one of the big uh, IT, IT guys. Okay. Uh, Jed just mentioned they want to mitigate the risk in adopting a new tech. Risk mitigation, yeah. Uh, service at less cost, that's uh, the, the feedback from, from our chat. Yes. Access to sure. technology, uh, services, at the, uh, yeah, cheaper, cheaper services. Okay. But why do they need this service? The, the, as it's a uh, red tech doing AI, ML, blockchain uh, to reduce their own cost. Their own cost or to have a competitive advantage, having a branding advantage. Why is their thinking about the collaboration? Of course. What is in for them? Yeah, it's going <laughs> to give them a. a, a, a competitive advantage because if they reduce their cost they're going to be more competitive anyway of course so they will have cost reduction mm -hmm. okay so they reduce their cost on the long term or on the short term basis a long term So there is no quick win in for them to have this, okay. No, because it will take a bit of time to, to implement. Yes. How can use they, this technology for their image, for their branding, for their marketing, for their sales? It's also a branding, of course. They will be seen as an innovative company in the industry. Well, marketing branding. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else is in for them? Yeah, Alberto say the POC is more cost reduction on the short term. My fault, Alberto, is uh, it's a cost reduction because the POC is just the first phase. Afterwards, if they implement the technology, uh, it will save cost uh, in the mid to long term. That's why I'm saying uh, in the long term. Okay. Uh, anything else regarding the fifth point? No. How, what it's is okay. about... Uh, if everything is participating, if me as an insurance company, because I'm a very old guy and not really new tech and I'm had marketing sales, would this not give me a technical competitive advantage to my competition? Would this not help me, help me to be perceived as the technical leader of my market. If you work with one of our fintechs, yes, it will make you the, your mark, the market leader in your industry. Ah, okay. Sorry guys, I forgot to mention that. Okay. So, if I would now only on a very pragmatic way, see which interest we have in common, which one we have in common. The branding, the technical reference. Okay. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So we have common interest, which is nice. We should find an agreement. We will not focus on opposing interest in the negotiation. Because in the negotiation, if you want to have a win-win, you have to focus on the ones you can build on, which are common ones. For us, it's marketing partner, branding, technical reference. For them, it's access to technology, marketing, branding, market leader in the industry. Yes? Mm -hmm. If we focus on the one that are dividing, we will go on a fight on positions. If I have to pay my staff and they want to have a cheaper service, I will not take the full value out of this deal. I will forget out in all the options, I will bring to them the full value what is in for them. And I will forget about my value. Therefore I said, in a crisis time, you have to be prepared. To pay my staff human capital is my issue. To get it at the best price is a pure procurement issue. But both companies need marketing, technology. You have a common ground in order to build on it. So, which are my options in order to satisfy my needs. Which options do you have, Alex? Providing them the service in return of uh, marketing, I guess, branding. But again, if I have to offer them my service for free, I'm losing because I might have to fire my staff and I will not deliver the service uh, to start with. I complicate a bit the things for you because it looks too easy for you right now. No, it is absolutely not complicated because I'm not even listening to you. Okay. <laughs> Go so, ahead then. My first option is build them a five-year business plan. Okay. Yes? That we can do together. What is the technology bringing to them? What is the common branding bringing to us? Do a common business plan. Yeah? Okay. Yes? Mm -hmm. Therefore, I know what is marketing, what the branding will bring, what the technical reference it will bring to them, what it will bring to us. This would be my first option to satisfy their needs. Yes? Yes. What could be a second option? going to see the competition. <laughs> no. I don't know, it's not really uh, fair. Open uh, book strategy. Yes. If you are working on a common business plan, my option is to work with an open book strategy. So can, can we say very transparently and bluntly to, to the negotiator in front, in face of us saying, listen, this is our five years business plan that we want to develop with you. Uh, but in a subtle way saying, if you're not interested, we know that your competition might be. Can we say that? It's not, in the, for me, it will bring so much friction um, into the negotiation that I don't know if it's something that you want to share to say that okay. you are working with others. If I would bring my options to practice, I would go and see this guy, yes? And I would say this guy, we have common interest, yes? 
we need a strong partnership, we need technical reference, you need competitive advantage, you need marketing branding, you want to be market leader in industry, you want to have access to technology. The only way we can go there is that we do a joint business plan. If we do this joint business plan, we will do it in open book strategy because you don't want to have an one shot. You need a partner in order to achieve your goals that will be at your side for the next five years. So if you have a cost problem for the moment, fine. I have one as well, then we will do it open book and we will work at cost because the only point I have is to pay my staff. Okay, the open book is just to say, okay, those are my, my costs and I just need to, yes. to pay the salaries. Okay. And these would be my two options in order to fulfill the common interest. Okay. You need to build the business plan for them. Why? Because this guy you are negotiating with, he has to show as well the value that you will bring to them with management, with shareholders. You have a commitment on the long term. You will work together, you will collaborate. You are not only, you are a fintech company, you are not developers in India. Yes? Mm -hmm. So this would be your options. Yes? What would be his options to so, achieve? Uh, just, just uh, hold on. Um, what I've said about competition, it's something that should be mentioned or not? No. Okay, better not. It's not on positions. The negotiation to go for win-win is that you build something together. Okay. You are not selling a one-shot if you would have said lose-lose, I want to have a lose-lose relationship with them. The common interest for you, your own interest would have been to pay your staff. Mm -hmm. And your option is to go to their competition. You understand the point? Yes. Therefore, the relationship is so important. Will this one bring me something in the future? Okay, good. Yes. People, people agree on with you on the on the chat. <laughs> so, but which options they have? It's a good question. What do you think? I mean, the, the, the main option for them is to, to agree and, and to pay for it. No, they want to have this for free. access to technology, cheaper service, cost reduction, long-term marketing, branding, market leader. So the first option is no idea, go ahead to identify the cost reduction. Yes? What do you mean by that? Are they aware what, how many euros the cost reduction will be on the next five years? Do they, are they aware of exactly what this will bring to them? Yes, that's why we discuss with them to start with. And that's the, uh, one of the value of proposition. Yeah. So their first option is, in order that I take a decision, I have to put the 50,000, the 15,000, the 1,000 euros against 1,000, 5,000 or 5 million. Mm -hmm. What is this development bringing to me? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, 
uh, as we've discussed by, uh, also yesterday, one of the options, of course, and uh, Jerome just mentioned it, is to do it themselves, to de develop them themselves, but yeah. they will need to identify that uh, into the cost reduction, because the cost reduction is the difference between doing ourselves and them doing them uh, themselves. Okay. Um, yeah. So to do it by themselves, will this, this is clearly an option for them. Mm -hmm. If this is clearly an option for them, uh, which other options they have? Let's say it's not an option for them because they don't have the, the right uh, talent and resources uh, internally to develop something like that. Uh, let's say it's an AI solution. Those people are not running around. So let's say they, don't, they cannot develop them uh, inside the company. Uh, so they have to find a service provider if they want to develop okay. that, that solution. Do it with your, with my competition. Yes. yes? Mm -hmm. This is clearly an option for them. Indeed, yeah. Okay. Do they have a third option? Uh, not doing anything. Okay. So, on what do I have to focus? On the cost reduction, of course. Show them that it's worth. I have to focus all my negotiation on building a business plan with them to help them identify the cost reduction. Yes. Mm -hmm. on the long term by doing this I kill exactly doing it with competition and doing anything by building a common five-year business plan I will put counter value in my negotiation to have a long-term relationship with them and we can skip uh, the two options for them. Yes? Mm -hmm. So in my first call where I go there, I will not negotiate the price. I will not negotiate the workload. I will negotiate a partnership and a common five-year business plan. Okay. And I will tell them first before we speak about price, about how to do, you have to know what it brings to you and we have to know what it brings to us. Now in the COVID time, we have all huge time. So let us do together a common business plan in order that we can both have an objective criteria to use. And then afterwards in the price negotiation, you are using criteria that are not, cannot be discussed by none of the parties. Yes? When you discuss, when you have your options, yes? Are you still with me, Alex? Yes, yes, I'm trying. I, just your mic is stopping from time to time. Okay. So, it's my internet connection. I don't know why. So it's, it's that. you will have a negotiation to have this common business plan on five years. Yes? Yes. In, in the negotiation, the criteria you will use to get paid is the business plan because you have developed it together they cannot discuss it, what it will bring, what it will not bring, which other 
criteria that cannot be used, cannot be discussed, is your own cost structure because you work on an open book with them. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. So yes. all the time you are, will discuss afterwards about the pricing. You have business plan, which is this is the cost of the development. This is this. We have an open book. We agreed on these figures. And this is the cost structure to get it. And this will bring you this. It has to bring us the other side. Yes? So you have two criteria which cannot be longer discussed. Yes. Bogdan, Bogdan from Romania is mentioning that open book sometimes is risky because the customer will know how to negotiate and put pressure on all cost elements. So by being tra too transparent, they will put even more pressure on you. No, not if you're working on a business plan. Okay, good. And if they want to put pressure on them, in the negotiation, you tell them, we are not here to negotiate the price, we are here to build a business plan. Good. We are not here in order to negotiate a carpet, we want both to deliver this. Yes? Okay. So, then you have to always be aware in the business uh, in what is your minimum and your maximum yes what do you need you have always be aware you have to have a figure in mind what is the minimum money you have to get out of the deal yes yeah what would be for you the minimum money you want to get out of this deal? I guess it's just my cost uh, than the salaries of my people on the short term, but I'm going to have to be profitable afterwards, right? Yes. I don't know what you expect as an answer. <laughs> what I would expect as an answer is what? What is your limit? Minimum is, is, your... is, is the minimum for right now in time of prices is just to cover my cost with a bit I of don't... margin, I guess. Huh? Yes. And what is this? So we 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 check the so my my monthly cash bond is around thirteen k per month, so it would be like yes. Minimum is 13k per, per, per month mm -hmm. because I need this money to pay my people and to pay my okay. uh, expenses. How many of your people uh, will work on this deal? 100% of the resources, 50% of the resources. I don't have many people, I just have three employees. So yes, I guess everybody, 100% of, of my team will work on the, on the project. So you will invest 100% of your human capital in this project? Let's say yes. Okay. Let's say yes, okay. So everybody will put in the, in the chat that that's a very bad idea, Alex. <laughs> But no, <laughs> it's not, there are no good and no bad ideas. There are only a plan. Yes. So your yes. minimum is to do this is 39,000 euros. Why? Because it will take you three months and you have to survive three months and you will not pay you oxygen with this deal. Yes? Yes. If 100% of your people are working on it, you are going for 100% of your resources over three months. You don't need your cash in the bank to do it. Your minimum limit 
if you go for this, is 39,000 euros. Yes? Yes. On the maximum, for a maximum of three months. Yes? Yes. Renegotiable after the POC is done, of course. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is the maximum? I would like to say the sky is the limit, my friend. No. I remember you asked 50k for it. You cannot increase it. That's true. That's a good point. I forgot about that. <laughs> yes? Yes. I asked 30k, in fact, for it. Huh? Yes, yes. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, before we set the goals, what we have is what the hell will I do when this negotiation fails? What will be your partner? From from the deal or my yes. reaction? No, you have now what is your best alternative? You go now for this and the negotiation will not end up in a win win. You will fail this negotiation. You will not have a deal with them. What will you do? I will go and see the competition, I guess. I don't have uh, any any other solution. Their competition. Okay. If you are looking for the best alternative to negotiate agreement, it has to be concrete. Mm -hmm. You have to work on it. it, has to be realistic and measurable. So, okay. because this, this is your security. This gives you the power in the negotiation. Is, are you sure that with competition, you will be successful? No, I mean, everybody has the same, faces so the same problems. So it's not an alternative? No. <laughs> what is the alternative? My alternative would be, I guess, to fire my people or some of my team because I have no other choice at one point. Just for me to understand the banner and for everybody, the banner for you is in the negotiation or is once the negotiation, negotiation has failed, you move on and you say, okay, what are my best alternatives now? Before you, before you negotiate, uh -huh. if I go back here, So Naji mentioned uh, his his banner or her banner. I'm sorry, uh, would be uh, maybe to do it for less. The best alternative would be to do for less than uh, the thirty nine k. Uh, if I would do it, do, do, it, do it for free, as they, they uh, as they ask to start with, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the partner in order to get? Uh, out of it. It is when you will would come theoretically out of this negotiation, it failed, and you have to find a solution. It is defined as the most advantageous alternative that the party can take if negotiation fail and an agreement cannot be made. Okay, so what would be the, the bad now? Please give us the answer because we still have just 10 minutes to go. <laughs> okay. Should I give you more? My banner? Yeah, give, banner. give us your banner. Okay, but uh, is everyone aware that I don't want to shock someone? Yep, I... Yes, they are. Yes? Okay. <laughs> My partner would be keep one FTE uh, 
I will reduce the specific cost of my company. Yes. When you I say keep one SE, just for everybody to understand, it's one yes. employee, right? And I would go for the best deal. with a partner that gives me marketing branding and technical working okay so your move will be to reduce your fixed cost by firing two of the three people yes and still doing that for almost for free with the insurance company because they will provide you branding technical reference and marketing when i was thinking now about it about your case all what is in for me on the long term is technical reference marketing branding value for my company the value for my company is important i will not go there and sell something for free if i don't know how the situation in three months will be okay i if see all the is the covid is the covid over in three months nobody knows um, but I can tell you that in three months the economical crisis will start. The economical crisis, what? The crisis, the economical crisis will start in three months. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's an insight. Now, the, the, the problem, uh, it's not a problem no, I see is. with your partner, but uh, imagine that you just have one resource. Uh, it will be more difficult to deliver the, the software or the service to the, to the company. Um, but yeah, people yes. are also mentioning that they agree with you on the chat. So what would be the, his partner then of the insurance company? Work with my competition okay find the weak one who is doing it for free okay yes yeah could be yes mm -hmm. So then I set my goals, yes? Mm -hmm. When I will now go there, when I know my partner, with what would I be satisfied? With the contract that will pay at least one of my uh, employees. No, I would be satisfied by a common five-year business plan. That would be my, uh, my aspiration to sign a five years yeah. contract with them. To have a five years business plan with the collaboration. I aspire to 30k, uh, 39k euro with a five year business plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I would settle, uh, I, uh, I would aspire 50k. A jump coming up. I 
I aspire to 50K. I, yes. And I will be satisfied, satisfied with 39. Satisfied. Yeah. satisfied with 39. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I would settle for a five year business plan. Yes. Yes. Why I would be satisfied with the five year business plan? Because this will help me with the investors in order to finance. Yes, it's a good point. Yes. So we have uh, uh, defined now together the negotiation plan how to go into it. The more difficult part is to negotiate it. I am free to give you some techniques, but what was really important for me was to show you how out of a situation you change the context of the situation to the most important for you. Forget about your fears, forget about your pressure, and only settle by the preparation of the negotiation to know exactly what is important and what you have to negotiate. The technique is really easy. You will get used to it. At the beginning, I filled in for each sales call, for each negotiation, the sheet. Afterwards, you start automatically to think like this. And the best way of doing it, if I shared with you a white paper, is try to fill it in. Sit down with a pecan, a Guinness, a beer, a wine, a martini, a pisco sour, I don't know, in the evening, set a situation and go point by point. Think point by point. We were really fast and I can promise you that no one will do it in one hour the first time. Because you already have to start with the type of relationship and which relationship you want to have. Alex wanted to have a win-win. Why? Because he wanted on the long term. Maybe if I only want to have money on the short term and no relationship with the partner, or I don't need this relationship for my company, I can go for a lose-lose. And my interest, the marketing partner, the branding, the technical reference would disappear as my interest. I only need workload. I only need cash. My negotiation position would be much, much better because their interest is they need access to technology, marketing and branding. My options would be not to build a common five years business plan, but I would only put them the pressure that there is no one else as me that can do it. I would take as options my, tec my technical advantages and I want to go in the price. Therefore, the type of relationship is important. Where you want to go. Forget the short-term pressure. Thank you so much, Frank. We are running out of time, so I'm sorry I will have to, to cut sorry. you here <laughs> because the time, the time, time is over. Uh, just before giving back the, um, the mic to, to Anthony, just give us one advice on, on a technique on negotiation uh, during this time of crisis when everything is done uh, via computer and via video camera. You taught me when I was at Price and, and uh, Procter & Gamble uh, some techniques on negotiation, uh, how to shake hands, how to sit next to people, stuff like that. But when it's done uh, remotely, what would be your main advice to start a conversation, a negotiation? Okay. I can share with you quickly. How, uh, Quick. quickly how I am doing for the moment in my job. Mm -hmm. I don't reply to emails. I don't reply to emails. I take the phone and I call them. 
all the people that are coming to us or want to have a collaboration, if they send an email, I call them to give them a personal contact. We have social distancing. People are afraid of not speaking to a colleague in the office or anything. The small phone call saying, hi, I'm Frank from the Red Cross. Um, I saw your email and I wanted to present myself. Uh, could we discuss about it? This is building the relationship. Don't stuck to the technology. Take the phone, call them. Okay. If someone before, is sending before even you a the negotiation, yeah. Yes, if someone sending you a request, don't answer the email, call and answer afterwards. Build the personal relationship. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for, for your advice, Frank. I guess you can, you have so many other things to say, but unfortunately we are running out of time and, and people are leaving already the, the yep. call because they've got other meetings and you have to. So um, thanks again, Anthony, if you want to wrap up and a uh, quick conclusion, please. Yes, of course. Uh, so Frank won't reply to any of your emails except to, uh, to the BATNA that you are going to send him. No, I'm kidding. Uh, and so he allowed us to share his email address with uh, with you. For those who need advice and feedback on your ne negotiation sheet, please send it to him, and he will have he will take the time to uh, to uh, to correct it for you. I also want to bri briefly uh, touch upon the next workshops that we are coming up, uh, developed by us together with our partners. Tomorrow we have a. Um, a session with Dr. Holding on how to manage your team and then how to headhunt uh, talent, tech talent across the globe in a time of crisis. Next week, we are going to have um, a communication expert that is going to come in and share how to deal um, those communication issues related with the press. We also we are also inviting you to join us uh, in our meditation session, a weekly meditation session that takes place every Tuesday, and you can find out uh, more about those uh, workshops and webinars on our website. Please register, uh, subscribe to our newsletter to stay tuned and updated on everything that we do on all the educational programs that we are setting up for you. And uh, that's basically it. Thank you very much for having been with us today thank you uh, alex for your insights for your for, for your fantastic uh, moderation trying uh, to respond to frank's question he's always tricky my first job with frank at Procter gamble the first day he asked me to go to cactus and sell uh, always ultra and uh, tampax tampoons and uh, yes but uh, that's uh, that's frank so th frank thank you thank you so much again and thank you anthony for making it happen thank you thanks Thank you. Keep safe. Stay home. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone.